In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the most popular features of Golang, which is GoRoutine or Concurrency. Concurrency is a programming concept that refers to the ability of running multiple tasks or processes concurrently. In another word, it allows different parts of the program to make progress independently without getting affected or frozen by another processes which may take longer to complete. Concurrency in Go achieved by lightweight threads of execution, which known as Go routine. If you want to learn about threads in detail, I have a link in the description for you. But in general, a thread of execution is the smallest sequence of programmed instruction that manage independently. One of the obvious example of concurrency is an operating system. Operating system runs multiple programs concurrently. When two or more programs are running on an operating system, the operating system will decide how many threads need to let the CPU run and for how long, which the scheduler handle this important task. So the CPU is going to switch rapidly between these threads in a matter of microseconds, sometimes milliseconds. By the way, switching time is different than execution time. In Golang, when we create an executable package which contains main function, the compiler will run the main function on a Go routine, which allows the main function to run concurrently with other Go routines. Although concurrency sounds exciting, but it comes with its unique challenges, which later we'll talk about it in this video. A Go routine is a function or method that executes independently or concurrently with other Go routines. To define a function or method as Go routine, we need to use Go keyword and then the function name. As you can see in this example, the function first and function second are running on two different Go routines. It's important to note that Go routines are not operating system threads. Instead, they are managed by the Go runtime. So if you run this now, we don't get the first function and second function get printed on the console because the main Go routine is finished before other two Go routines executed. To make this example work, we can use a sleep. Now we are able to see that function 1 and function 2, which is the first and second, is going to print the result on the console before exiting the program. Similar to kernel level threads, which managed by the operating system, Go routines are entirely managed by Go runtime scheduler. This is the reason why Go routines are cheap and lightweight. Also, GoRoutine has very small memory footprint, about 2 kilobytes, where the default size of a thread is 8 kilobytes. There are three states of GoRoutine, running, runnable, and not runnable. When we create a GoRoutine using a Go keyword, it gets added to a global queue called a run queue. The runnable GoRoutines are picked from the queue to run, and those are blocked, put into a not runnable queue. Once it's unblocked, the Go routine will put back on the runnable queue and wait for its turn to run it. You may heard of parallelism or think that the Go routine is running task in parallel. Well, actually, that's not the case. The concurrency and parallelism are totally different. Concurrency is about the design and structure of a program, enabling it to handle multiple tasks concurrently why parallelism is about the actual simultaneous execution of multiple tasks utilizing multiple processors or computing resources. In Go, synchronization is essential to ensure proper coordination and communication between Go routines. Synchronization mechanisms are used to prevent data racing, ensure consistency, and safe data sharing among Go routines. One of the techniques to synchronize Go routine is wait group from the built in sync package. With the help of sync wait group, that we can add number to the weight groups that means equivalent to how many go routines we want to run so each iteration here we add one and we run one 
go routine with it and then we send the wait group variable to each go routine to signal the ending which use the differ to execute the wg.down method at the end of the function when it's returning and then print out some message here the wait group will uh, block this execution until all those go routines return and then we'll continue executing the next line and so on the mutex for mutual exclusion is one of the traditional synchronization mechanism used to protect shared resources in concurrent programming. It provides mutual exclusion, meaning that only one thread or go routine can access the protected resource at a given time. Mutex has two main operations, lock and unlock. In this example, we expect that 1000 printed out on the console. If we run this, we get different values. As you can see, 989, 986, 971, and always going to be different. That's because one of the go routines, when tries to uh, increment the value, the value is already used by another go routine. So that is not available to the go routine that is trying to increment. And that's why you see results are not. 1000 with mutex we can fix this like so so if you run this now we will see that we get 1000 that's because every time the go routine tries to access the value of the c dot value is going to lock the memory and another go routine is waiting to access this variable once it's unlocked so that's why this is going to fix the synchronization by lock and unlocking the resource by using mutex we can ensure that critical sections of code are executed exclusively by a single thread or go routine which prevent concurrent access and potential data race And we have channels, which are unique to Golang. I have a video about channels, which is types in Go. If you haven't watched already, you can find it in the same playlist. The main responsibility of channels are to communicate between Go routines, but due to its nature, which is blocking, can use for synchronization as well. That means the channel will block the rest of the code from execution until it receives a data so in the main function we have slices of messages and we have a loop that range a range over messages and sends each message to print message function on a go routine along with the down channel which defined earlier and this loop is going to wait four times to receive data on the down channel that's because the message was defined earlier in the main function the quantity is 4 and then once receive all those 4 signals on the channel is going to execute rest of the program and in the print message function is going to take some random time to delay the process and then print the message and once it's done send the signal to the down channel if we execute this we will see that all of the messages are printed before the last message from the main go routine printed and terminate the program and for communication via channels we can send data to a bidirectional channel from the go routine and receive it on the other go routine in this example in the main function we define a channel and then call the sender function on a go routine send a message along with the channel and then call the receiver with the channel so what is happening here is the sender will receive the message and the parameter with, it, with its channel and then send the message to the channel and the receiver is waiting here 
to receive a data from the channel and then it's going to print it. In the main function, the sender function runs on the go routine, but the receiver blocks the execution of the rest of the main function. Now if we run this, we see that we receive the message without terminating the program before the receiver execute. Concurrent programming adds more complexity in problems and makes it very difficult to have a safe program. Deadlocks, race condition, and starvation are some of those problems that caused by giving incorrect access to the share variables. However, Golang makes it much easier to deal with these problems, but it isn't solved completely. The race condition is when two or more operations does not run in a correct order. The problem is when operations are running on the multiple thread, the order of execution is not guaranteed. That means the execution order is not going to follow the source code's order. Here is an example of race condition. If we run this with the race flag, we will see that the compiler warns us about the race condition. If we just run this program without the race flag, we don't get any warning, which is dangerous. And every time we run this code, we get the different results. That's because when the go routines are trying to add value to the share int, another go routine is using it. So the go routine that is trying to add to it cannot do it. And now we want to fix the data racing condition in this example using channels only. With help of channels, we can fix this data racing. We create the channel, which is the buffer channel, and inside the function, the worker function, we are going to send a signal. And because this channel set the buffer to one, once we send the signal, other channels will be blocked until this channel send the data out. After that, we're going to add the value to the shared integer and then we send out the data from the channel so the buffer it will be free for the next go routine to use it and do the same when our concurrent program gets complicated we may face the deadlock the deadlock means when processes block each other and none of them makes any progress this makes the program to freeze forever if you're lucky go will catch the deadlock at the runtime for us. If you go run this now, you will see that we have a deadlock. So we are lucky that we catch it because the program is fairly simple. If we change the order now to this, we are no longer having deadlock and there is no error whatsoever. That's because at the time that we are sending the data to the channel, there are already a receiver channel in the go routine. The starvation is when one of the go routine constantly locking this resource until the other go routine is unable to make use of it as much. Since Go version 1.9, they try to solve this issue and improve it. For those go routines that will wait for the lock for more than one millisecond will get a starving flag. Then the unlock method hands off the lock to the first waiter directly. Let's run this and see the result. By the way, I'm using Go version 1.20. So the result is not that obvious compared to older version of Go before the improvement. So as you can see, one of the Go routines are running more than the other, which is the Go routine one, is using too much of the resources more than the G2. So in general, Go routines are making the program a bit more faster by running some tasks concurrently and this is good for some programs not all for example a web server which is waiting for the new client to read the request running the listener on the go routine is a good solution well that was all for this video and thanks for watching